Hello, and welcome to my studio. In today's program, I'm going to take you through all the steps uh, to create this image. OK, so let's go straight into it then. Here I have a, a digital SLR camera, full frame camera, which is tethered uh, into Capture One, which we're running on this machine here. Uh, then we have the set. What I've done here is um, I have a old tray uh, which uh, is usually used for collecting oil from vehicles etc um, and I've covered that with a sheet of black polythene uh, to make it easier to uh, to get a, a good reflection from the surface of uh, of what is now water I don't know whether you can see that but I've filled this right up to the very brim I don't know whether you can see at the back here uh, that uh, it is actually right at the very edge uh, which is quite important because um, you need a horizon line uh, but we'll come back to that a little later uh, then moving further backwards uh, I have a uh, full width roll of background paper here um, because again we need uh, the, uh, the width here uh, and we need a good deal of space between the back of this and the paper uh, so that in this space uh, we can put um, a flashlight uh, to illuminate the background. Um, I'm using Studio Flash for this. Uh, you can do this with uh, normal speed lights. Uh, it doesn't require a great deal of power. Uh, just a bit of thought, really. OK, uh, so just to go through what I have uh, as a subject, uh, this is uh, an old um, and dried out uh, rose um, which I have just uh, attached to a clamp which is then uh, submerged underneath the surface of the water. Okay, so moving forwards to the camera, uh, I have a, a 24 to uh, 70 uh, zoom lens on here. Um, and that is going to be easily uh, good enough to do this sort of image. Um, I'm probably going to use it at the 70 uh, millimeter end, uh, but just to show you the, the context, uh, I will take some test pictures at 24 mil. Okay, so um, talking of tests, uh, what we should do to start with, as always, is just take a blank frame just to see what the ambient light uh, is doing to the, uh, the picture. Uh, so if I just move on to Capture One here, and I'll just uh, grab a capture. There we go. Uh, and that is virtually uh, dark enough. So I don't think we're getting any um, interference from the studio lights. Uh, this is at f8. Uh, that may change as the... Uh, uh, as we go through it, but um, for now, I think that's pretty good. Okay. So the next thing to do um, would be uh, to get some lights in. Uh, now, for a subject like this, uh, what we actually want is a, um, a mixture of uh, soft light and hard light uh, for the actual subject. Uh, for the background, uh, I want a general glow um, just, behind, uh, just behind the subject here uh, so that uh, it adds a bit of emphasis. So in order to do that, I'm just going to use uh, a Profoto B2. Uh, this is a Profoto B2. Uh, the equivalent these days would be the B10, uh, which I think is the... Uh, new variant. So I'm just going to put this on this stand at the back here. And tighten that up like that. I also need a flash sink uh, on the camera. So I'll just put this on. Turn that on. Uh, just make sure it's talking to the flash. Yep. 
Okay, uh, and uh, we'll just take a, uh, a test image to get an exposure. Right. Uh, well, I can see from that that it's uh, probably two or three stops under where it needs to be. Uh, so I'll just add some energy. And we'll just take another image. OK. And I think you can see here uh, that we're getting a bit of a glow uh, behind the subject. Zoom in a bit. There we go. So that's the, uh, the, the starting position. Um, I will need to uh, just zoom the, uh, the lens in uh, to frame the shot properly, which I will do just now. There we go. Somewhere around there. OK. Just take another image. There we go. Right, now I mentioned this uh, horizon line down the bottom here. You can see the uh, reflection. That's the water, which is right up to the very edge. Uh, so we might need to just tidy that up a little bit in Photoshop a bit later, or might just leave it. Uh, we'll see what it, uh, what it looks like. Uh, as far as the, uh, the background, I think that could do to be uh, slightly brighter. So I'll take it up by half a stop. Like that. Take that. There we go. Uh, yes, so that's about there now. If we just compare these two, that's a little bit brighter. Uh, I think that will do for the time being. Right, so now it's time to uh, add uh, the main light uh, for the, uh, the subject, the rose itself. So what I'm going to do is use uh, a B1X, whoops. And I'm just going to light this from the side, uh, probably somewhere around here, maybe slightly forwards. Uh, in fact, what I might do is just turn this on and just turn the modeling light on so I can just visually see uh, what this light is doing. So I have that about there somewhere. I think that should work quite well. Turn, oops, I'll turn the modeling light off. Okay, uh, and I tend to do uh, one light at a time, so I will now turn off the, uh, the light on the background whilst I set this one up. Uh, so just go for a bit of an exposure test. Right, uh, very undercooked. Um, let's add two or three stops to that. There we go, and we'll just do that again. There we are, we're starting to get there. Uh, I think you can just about see um, we've got a highlight on the top here, uh, getting some crisp detail in here. Um, let me just zoom in a little. Yes, that's looking okay. You can see a reasonable amount of detail in there. Uh, let me just turn the exposure warning on, see if we get anything. We're just on the edge. So I think that's OK uh, as it is. Uh, very contrasty, uh, which is just what I wanted, really. OK. Uh, and it's caught the stem quite well. Focus seems good. Yes. So that's not uh, too bad uh, as a starting point. Um, I think I might like to uh, just make it a little more um, concentrated. We are actually just catching the, some of the background. Um, so I'm just going to add a, a reflector to that. 
just so that uh, it's not catching quite so much on the background. If I put the modeling light back on again, you may make out just where it's catching on the background. So if I just pop this on here, so let's just do another test. That will uh, not only concentrate the light, but it will also uh, probably increase the exposure. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, I mean, the main thing that you can see, or the main difference you can see there, is that the background here is completely black, which is what we want, really. Uh, there was too much spill coming from this one. So this is much better with the black background, but this has burnt out by the look of things. Yes, we're getting an exposure warning uh, on here. Uh, so it just needs to be taken back ever so slightly. So let's just take the exposure down by one stop. Just do another test. There we go, that's looking a bit better. Let's give that a go. Yeah. Uh, I think I'll take it down a little bit more, maybe half. Yeah, that's just about where I want it. Uh, the only thing is, it's actually making it uh, a little too dark around the, uh, around the back. It may be okay when I turn the uh, backlight back on, uh, which is what I'm going to do now. So now we'll do a full test. There we go. Oh, that's quite nice. Yeah, so we're starting to get there, I think. Um, one thing that uh, I would do is uh, maybe colour the background light uh, with a complementary colour to uh, this uh, at the uh, beginning here. I'm just going to use uh, one of these, which is just a gel. So that can go on the, uh, uh, on the head down there. So we just pop this on here. Like that. Make sure I haven't moved that too far. That looks okay. Now that will probably affect the exposure as well. Oh yes, that's added quite a nice, uh, quite a nice tint to the background, I think. Um, I would still like this a bit more uh, lit. So what I think I might do is just using a piece of card, recycle some of the, uh, the power out of here. Uh, I'll just give that a bit of a test to start with. So if I just do that. Yes, that's better. Perhaps a little too much, but um, in order to get that a bit more controlled, what I might do is just bring a stand in. And just pop this up here. By using a stand like this, um, you get quite a lot of repeatability. Uh, it, it's nice to be able to just hold things in, but sometimes you want to be able to uh, repeat that fairly accurately. Uh, there we go. That's somewhere around there. So I'll just check that's not actually in the picture. If it isn't, I'll just give that a bit of a go. There we are, that's better. Yes, and I think if I just flick between these two, yeah, you can see that's taken it down ever so slightly by moving it away. So by moving the flag uh, further away, uh, you can change um, the uh, amount of filling that you're getting on this side. Right, so with all that in place, 
Uh, I think now is the time to start making our rose uh, cry. Uh, and to do that, I'm just going to use this small pipette. So we'll give it a bit of a test. Um, just as a test, let's do that. Yeah, and you can see we've got a, a ring here, uh, which uh, has come from the, uh, the pipette. Right. So this is a bit of trial and error. Uh, the idea being that uh, I will just do some drips uh, and do some um, captures and glue the whole thing in Photoshop. Well, let's see how we've been getting on. Ah, you see, this one's caught the drip in midair, which is quite handy. That one's missed. Uh, that's quite a nice one there. So it is a bit hit and miss, uh, but we'll carry on. And just keep reviewing every now and again where we've come to. That's a particularly good one. Okay, so we'll do some more. wait for those to load in. There we go. Okay, so now all that remains uh, is to make some selections uh, and then um, put them into Photoshop, which is what I'll do right now. Here we are in Photoshop and I've opened up uh, all the uh, selected images. We've ended up with uh, seven or eight, I think. Uh, and we'll just load all those into a stack using the uh, scripts, load files into stack, uh, add open files, click on OK. Uh, and that will run through uh, and just put all those together for me. So now we have all of the images uh, in a stack down here. Um, yes, that is the, uh, the background one. Um, so I think what I'll do is just reorder that and just pop that down the bottom there. Now it's always a good idea just to check that all of the images line up uh, as you expect them to. Uh, and the way you can do that is if you just select every layer uh, and change the uh, mode to um, something like uh, pin light, yeah, that'll do. Uh, we can now see every image. Uh, and then if you just go through them, turning them off, like so. Yes, that one you can see has landed in the wrong position. So that's probably not a good layer to use. And that one, uh, you can see this uh, blob here, uh, is actually out of line with all the other blobs. So we'll get rid of those two. Uh, just by turning them off. Um, so having done that, we'll just carry on down, see if there's anything else which is glaringly obvious. Uh, I don't think so. Right, I'll just bin those two. Like that. OK, so now we have all the um, bubbles in the right place. 
so having deleted the two layers, just make sure that's gone back into normal mode. Select them all to do that. So that's a shift select back to normal. So that's changed the blending mode to normal for every layer now. Uh, and then um, what I will do is starting at the bottom, so I'll turn these ones off. Uh, so just starting with this one, what I will do is just add a layer mask, but I'll uh, hold down the Alt key uh, while I do it, which will give me an inverse mask. So now, wherever I paint uh, with white, uh, will bring the uh, that part of the image through. So somewhere around here there is a blob, for instance. Uh, I don't know whether there was anything down here. Yes, there was. Yeah, a bit of something. That's good. So we'll have that as well for now. Um, this bit here, if I just zoom in, I'll just change the brush to black uh, and just change its size. What I'm going to do is just get rid of the rest of this pipette and leave just the semblance. I'm doing this quite quickly. You would probably take a bit more care. Something like that so uh, and now uh, just zoom out again just to check that yeah that's believable uh, so moving up a layer not too sure whether I want that one right now uh, I'll leave that for now and move up to the next one uh, now I definitely want that one I think that will be quite good so again um, select that layer, hold down the Alt key, that will give you an inverse mask. Go back to the brush, somewhere around here, wasn't it? There we go. Let me just go back to black and make that quite soft and a bit bigger. There we go. Uh, and again, just go up a layer. Um, I quite like the rings on the uh, on the ground with that one, but oh yes, that's the one I'm looking for. That's an excellent one. So again, what we'll do is just add, select that layer. Add an inverse mask. And just paint with white. That's very good. And we have So do we really need that one? Um, no, I don't think that adds anything to it. So we'll just uh, we'll just leave that one off. Okay. Uh, so having a little look around the rest of the image, that looks uh, okay. Uh, I think I might just apply a crop. Uh, so there we go. Uh, Sixteen by nine. That's good. Bring that up there. And there we have it. So there you go. That concludes uh, the uh, Crying Rose. Uh, well, I hope you've enjoyed uh, this uh, program. 
Uh, and if you like these sort of things, uh, all to do with uh, studio uh, setups like this, just click on the other two images as they appear, and that will take you to some of the other videos that I've made. Uh, and also, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much. We'll see you on the next one.